ever get bored? You really should try not to, you know. It is awfully tedious. But fear not, for with good breeding, one should always be able to at least maintain a semblance of interest in almost any topic, no matter how religious. Once, in fact, I was reading to my son Alistair, and I was only 30 verses into the book of John when he openly yawned. He never did that again. He couldn't. Not with his jaw in that condition. Hmm. Uh, but importantly, this is the incident that inspired tonight's tale of uplift and moral improvement. It is about a little girl who was bored, despite being from an excellent family. This is the story of little Lucy Lewis, who was bored from the day she was born. Ah! Happy, Happy birthday! birthday! <laughs> What a day we have for you, my little darling. Shopping at Harrods to buy anything you want, a picnic lunch in Hyde Park with all your friends, and then, in the evening, we all trot off to the circus, booked especially just for you. Hey! <laughs> what do you say? Happy birthday, Lucy. Lucy? Boring. All right, darling. How about... How about... A trip to the New Forest, spending the day trekking with your very own pony. Oh, you don't get it, do you? Why, you ungrateful Stephen, little... Stephen, what about a boating trip up and down the Thames? Be serious. Uh, tennis? Swimming? Yawn. A new kitten? No. Ice skating? No. The theatre? Cycling? Look, just give me the present. If you've brought the present, then you leave it here and go away. All right, here is your present, but we will stay and watch you open it. Why? Oh, if you must. But you'll only be disappointed in my reaction. No, we won't, darling. It's your birthday. One would think a lovely present would bring a smile to Lucy's face. God, I'm bored. No, nothing could rouse young Lucy from her torpor. Mr and Mrs Lewis grew concerned that she could well become a disruptive child. Or even worse, turn to literature. Ugh. You'd better think of something or I'll kill her. I will. There's only one hope left. Uncle Cecil. Uncle Cecil? Just stop looking at me, will you? Uncle Cecil. Uncle Cecil. Uncle Cecil loved children and was renowned for his kindness and simple laughter. Hello, you must be Lucy. I'm bored already. His house bristled with everything an inquisitive child could need. It was a treasure trove for the young. Upon hearing the news, she would be spending a couple of weeks with this enigmatic relative, Lucy reacted in typical fashion. Oh, God, two weeks! So, for that first week, Uncle Cecil tried to engage Lucy's bored little mind. Magic tricks, games, charades, inventions, oh, he tried everything legal. Fool. Nothing had made even the slightest impression until one morning. I have to admit it, Lucy. I've tried everything in my power to interest you. Really? And you are still as bored as when you first arrived? What do you think? <laughs> well, there is one thing, I suppose. It won't work. Fair enough. All right, what is it then? A game! What game? Hide and seek. You hide somewhere in the house, I count to 100 and come and find you. Is that it? I'm afraid so. Well? Whatever. Lucy wants to play hide and seek. What do you think to that? Hide and seek it is. Yeah, and um, that puppet thing. Don't do it again. Oh, oh, Lucy. What now? You may hide anywhere you wish in my house, anywhere except one room, the room at the very top of the house. There you must not go. Understand? Yeah, yeah. Bye. Lou? 
Lucy, I'm looking for you. Is that it? Oh, how boring. Just at that moment, Uncle Cecil called out, I'm looking for you. Lucy was in the dark. Now the dark can be a frightening place, a place of loneliness and fear where one's thoughts turn in on one's mind. My son Alistair certainly believed so, when as a boy I would lock him in the darkened pantry to build up his character. Oh, the screaming and his ripped bloody fingernails as he attempted to stave off the rats. But he soon learned. He learned that sometimes the dark can be a place of enlightenment and contemplation where the great moral truths become crystal clear. Oh, but Lucy, Lucy discovered that this dark wardrobe was more than just a place of contemplation. As she pushed her way through the mothballed coats, she realised it was much, much, much more. <laughs> For once, Lucy was not bored. How the wonder of simple imagination can stir even the most jaded child's heart. For this wonderstruck girl, the afternoon passed all too quickly in a blissful fog of laughter, tea and magic. It was as if the world was a new place that she had never known. However... Well, Miss Lucy, are you bored now? Oh no, Miss Rumpstum, I'm having the most wonderful time. Really, I am. <sighs> well, it's not over yet, dearie. Oh, no. There's time for one more thing. A story. A story? Would you like to hear it? There should always be a story at tea time. Oh, yes, Mr. Ogerton. Yes, please. Are you sure, Miss Lucy? Oh, yes. It's all, it's all so wonderful. Very well. <coughs> now, this is the story of the land of Nana. It is an allegory, a Christian allegory, about a lion. Lucy listened patiently. She tried to concentrate. Really, she did. Mr. Rumpty-Tum would not cease. The story, the tedious allegory, went on and 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 on. After six hours, young Lucy Lewis, who had thought nothing could interest her, finally understood the true meaning of boredom. Ah! And she was away, 
the sheer undiluted boredom of a needlessly complicated Christian allegory filled with stupid metaphors and allusion stirred poor Lucy into a last desperate dash for freedom. And she ran. Oh yes, she ran through the coats. Imagine her heart, the blood pumping its excited fountains through her terrified chest. Oh, her breathing increasing to a breathy moan, heaving beneath her blouse, fearing that at any moment a hand or a black talon would clap itself over her mouth and drag her down to the mothballs, ready to tear her poor white body into huge bloody clumps. <laughs> And, but, but none of that happened. You see, give me some water, please. Maid, water! Which is an interesting thing, isn't it, children? That happen from time to time. Water! There's so much of the allegory left to read. Big mice, ships, dear me, oh deario. Here in Dana, Lucy, tea time lasts forever. <laughs> oh, Uncle Cecil was pleased with himself. A job well done. <sighs> Thank you very much. young Edmund. Apparently, he's very, very bored. The moral being, there is nothing to be done with some children. Good night. <laughs> 